How's it going guys? Uh, Indigenous Rookie Cards, aka Name, coming at you with another uh, YouTube video. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I just want to start by saying thank you to everyone who's subscribed. I'm up to 50 subscribers on YouTube now and I just really want to thank everyone who has supported my page. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do today is I just want to share some of the vintage cards in my collection. So we're talking like pre-1989 and there's a large range of cards. Um, there's a couple items in here that are considered non-cards, um, but I, I just wanted to show them off anyway. I got some graded. Um, I have multiple copies of rookie cards and uh, I just want to go through some of them with you share what I have and then talk about them a little bit just to uh, give you a little bit of background on them but we'll get started uh, I'll start with like the earliest cards that I have the earliest card that I have uh, is this 1933-34 uh, V252 Canadian Chewing Gum Clarence Taffy Abel rookie card so if you're not familiar with Clarence Taffy Abel um, he is one of the earliest indigenous players in the NHL potentially the first indigenous player in the NHL. So he's a Anishinaabe, um, also known as Ojibwe. He's American. Uh, he was also the very first American in the NHL. Um, he is a silver medalist from the 1924 Winter Olympics. He won a silver medal with Team USA uh, in hockey and uh, played a number of seasons. And I, he's just someone that really gets overlooked. Um, very very important to the history of, of hockey itself because he's the first American but also like um, also very important to indigenous hockey in the NHL just because um, just because of all of his accomplishments and the significance of him but um, I picked this card up off YouTube uh, YouTube off eBay um, a while back uh, probably like coming up on two years now um, I heard about him a while ago um, doing research for my collection um, I came across a book that was written in, like back in the 90s and they talked specifically about Clarence Taffy Abel in there he has a couple page dedicated in there to him and I was just really shocked because I had never heard of him before this was probably back in like 2014 or so when I started this collection and I just could never find a card and I could also never um, find one for a good price. Um, this one here is an amazing shape. Again, this is from 1933. It, it's really hard to find these in, in good condition and in like complete condition because um, what people did is they, they would cut these cards up I mean, kids collect cards. They did a lot of things with cards back in the day. Uh, I did a lot of crazy things with my cards too when I was growing up. But um, these cards in particular, they would cut the bottom off right here. So they would cut the K off. And what they would do is um, they would have to um, spell a word. I believe the word was hockey. Um, I can just double check. But, um, but anyway, if you... Spell if you, uh, oh, sorry, uh, it says collecting sufficient correct letters to spell the full names of any five of the following teams. So that included Montreal, Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, Ottawa Senators. Well, essentially all of the, the teams in the NHL at that time. And what you did was you spelled the name of the team, you sent it in, they sent you a free hockey game. And um, that's what most kids did with these. And to find these are fully intact, really really difficult to do um, I'm actually thinking about sending this one into PSA uh, just to get it graded I don't suspect it'll be like too too high of a grade I mean it, I think it's an exceptional condition for the time period that it came out of um, and it's a really really important piece of my collection it's one of my one of my favorite cards and I really got lucky when I picked this one up um, I got a couple more Clarence Taffy Abel cards here well, one of them isn't a card. This is considered just a matchbook. So um, Clarence Taffy Abel, after he retired, opened up a, uh, a log cabin cafe. And these were the matchbooks that they gave out at the time uh, for people who came in. But this one here is listed as an official card. This is also a matchbook. 
Um, I can't remember what it is, but I, I actually picked this up before I picked up his actual rookie card because when I bought this off of eBay, um, this, yeah, actually this is the Diamond Notch Company, but when I bought this off eBay, the seller listed this as a rookie card, but it's actually his second year card. Uh, and it, I didn't care though. I mean, it's a really cool item and it filled a spot for his rookie card until I got it. Um, but if you look at like all three of these, you can just see like it's the same picture for each of them. So um, very limited on photography back in those days, as you can tell. Um, same photo was used in all of these, but um, these, these are all going back to the 1930s. Um, they're pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, so we'll move into the next player. So this is uh, George Armstrong, rookie card, 52-53 Parkhurst. Um, if you're looking at this like in comparison to like this Fred Sasakamus card, um, you'll see that it's a miniature card, very cool looking card. Uh, this was the first big, big card that I picked up um, for my collection. And when I, when I first started this collection, I seen that George Armstrong's rookie was part of it, and I knew it was um, a, a little bit of a pricey card for me at the time. Um, most of them, like if you could found, find this in like decent condition, you're paying probably 200 bucks or so for it. Um, at that time, anyway, I'm not even sure what these go for now. And unfortunately, recently, um, George has passed away, and um, yeah, so this is his rookie card. And I just, I remember how happy I was when I picked it up because this was a really, really big card for me. And I was like, I was holding off for a long time on getting it because I was trying to um, make sure I had the money for it. And I knew when I got it, it would be like a, a centerpiece to my collection. And it still is like, it's, it's one of the more important vintage cards that I have. Um, just iconic player, just very important to Toronto Maple Leafs history, hockey history itself. And um, yeah, very sad that he that he passed away. And then next we have, of course, I just showed this Fred Sasakamus. I also got the graded version. I got a KSA 6.5. Um, two different versions of this card right here, um, if you don't know. Uh, one is called the Lucky Premium Back, which is this one, and then one is called the Bio Back. So the Bio Back has all of his statistics, like all of his information about him. Um, and this one is kind of, um, it, it's a, it's a card with a giveaway on the back of it. So, um, two versions, I picked them both up. Um, very important card for my collection. Fritz of Sakamos is just a, a very, very important person to the history of, uh, indigenous hockey. Um, everyone loved him, looked up to him, just a very, very kind person. And I, I got to meet him in 2018 and he was just incredible just an incredible person. And the things that he overcame um, to get to the NHL, get to where he is in his life are just unbelievable. Um, you know, being a part of the, the residential school system and, and having all these like incredible, incredible barriers in, in front of him. And um, you know, the, the, the horrors that were faced in those, those places um, for him to come out of there and, and make it to the NHL, it just like, it's just unreal. So he's always going to be important to the game of hockey uh, and to the indigenous hockey history. Just, just unreal. So up next, uh, I got a Pierre Pilo rookie card. This is from 57-58. Uh, and uh, I picked this up. Like I heard all like I heard a lot of um, different places that uh, Pierre Pilo was indigenous. Um, and I picked up the card just in case, but then I, I met somebody who knew him and he confirmed to me that he was, he was Mohawk. And, um, one of the things he said was that, um, he said that when he was playing, he never told anyone of his, his ancestry just because he knew like, um, the, of the, the reactions he would get from people and the potential racism he could possibly face. And that's. Uh, a big part of the reason why he hit it while he was a, an NHL player. So um, really nice looking card, really good shape, um, consider it's from the 50s. 
really like that card. Uh, of course, next we have uh, Jimmy Nielsen. This is a 62-63 tops rookie card. Uh, these cards are really nice. Um, one thing you'll notice, like I looked at a lot of copies of this card, um, much like uh, I think it's like the 72, um, 72. I think this is 73, 74. Opeachy, like that. You find the copies and they just have like a lot of chipping on the edges. It's just how they were. So this one has a little bit of that all over across the top, down the sides. Um, but still a really nice looking card and Jimmy Nelson uh, recently passed away as well. So really happy to have that card in my collection. Uh, up next is a 6970 uh, Opeachy Frank St. Marseille rookie card. I got two copies. I, I got a raw version and then I got a PS, PSA 9 version of that card. So two copies. Um, this one is just beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, PSA 9. Uh, this one is a little bit more rough shape and I picked this up early in my collection too. Um, I didn't like when I was picking up cards like I didn't care about the condition of them. I just like wanted them in my collection. And um, I mean th this one is not terrible, but uh, it is a little bit on the rough side, but I, you know, I still got the PSA 9 so really happy about that. Um, and then uh, up next, Reggie Leach. Really nice looking card. Um, I actually have seven copies of this card and I would show you them all, but um, it's late right now, like it's after midnight and I'm making this video. But in, and in order for me to access the other cards, I would, uh, I'd have to wake some people up in my house and I don't wanna do that. So um, just wanna show this one copy of it all. Really nice, nice copy of that one too. Um, next, this isn't, actually a card um this is a stamp so this is from the california golden seals uh wayne king i had a, a um a, a short career in the nhl but uh very significant uh nonetheless so this card it's not uh, like a peachy tops like official nhl card i actually found this online and um this I think this was like a team issued stamp or something and this is like one of the few like hockey cards that he has so I wanted to pick this up for my collection to add it to it um, next I got a couple more from 73 74 these are the cards I was talking about uh, Henry Boucher Henry Boucher uh, rookie card best sideburns in the game and then uh, Bobby Taylor rookie card as well and um, you know, one of the things um, with players in my collection, like a lot of them have indigenous ancestry. They don't necessarily identify being like a First Nation or Métis or Inuit player. Um, this guy right here, Bobby Taylor, he, he's one of those guys that has indigenous ancestry. And um, I, I read about that in an article online from when he was working with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, but I mean, he does, have a look of being indigenous and one of his names like nicknames like everyone else in this collection is the chief so very original um of course i'm being facetious uh up next uh, probably the goat of all indigenous players brian trache this is his rookie card 76 77 opichi i got two copies of this uh not sure what my other copy is, but I do have two copy of this, um, copies of this. This is my better, this is the better copy of the two. And this one is in my main collection. The other one is is put aside with all my Brian Trotty cards. But um, yeah, I've had an interesting conversation about Brian Trotty, uh recently. And just, you know, I just kind of bringing it to people's attention that you know, he was really a great hockey player, won six Stanley Cups, 17th all-time in the NHL scoring, uh, league MVP, won the Art Ross Trophy, won a Conn Smythe, um, like a seven or eight-time All-Star, was on Team Canada, just like a, an amazing player. And I just feel like he doesn't get the attention or the hobby love that he deserves. Um, 
And then up next, I got a couple um, Gary Sargent rookie cards. And, and then I got a couple Stan Jonathan. So the, this card is really important to me because um, this was the very first card I picked up from my entire Indigenous rookie card collection. So when I first started this collection, I, I researched the players I was able to find online at the time, and Stan Jonathan was the very first player I picked up. I picked the, this card up for $3 at a card show in Edmonton, and uh, it, it'll always stand out to me because of that it'll always be very important to me it'll always be very significant it's not worth a lot but you know is one of the toughest players to ever play in the nhl and um uh, i'll always remember that this is the first card i picked up all right so up next a couple bobby simpson rookies So got a couple of Dale McCourt rookie. If you get a chance, Google Dale McCourt. Um, read a little bit about his story. Very interesting. Um, was a heck of a hockey player. Was a uh, team Canada for World Juniors um, back in '77. Uh, I think they won the gold. I mean, they might have won silver. But anyway, he was the leading scorer from that team. Um, just that, like a really, really accomplished junior player. Had a um, decent NHL career um, and a very interesting story as well. Uh, up next, a couple of Ronde Alarm cards. And then next we have a Perry Turnbull. Perry Turnbull, this rookie card is a card that was recently added to my collection um, within the last year. I had a friend reach out to me and, and let me know that um, he knows people that is that are, is related to uh perry turnbull from his community and so what i did was i reached out to his son travis turnbull who is also a former nhl player playing pro overseas right now and i, I messaged him on twitter and i asked him are you indigenous he said i am i am i do have indigenous ancestry um and they are um they're from treaty six territory in alberta so um, I still want to do a little bit more investigation on exactly where it's from. Um, from the stories that I, I'm told from the people that are connected to him is that uh, he's connected to Enoch Cree Nation. Um, but uh, I do want to find out for sure. I just know that they're, uh, they're part Cree and from Treaty 6 territory. And again, like uh, I always say, like I never ever claim that I'm... Uh, I'm an authority or I know everything about indigenous players because like even since I started this collection um, there's been so many more players that have been added to to this collection like I when I first posted it on Twitter there were 74 players and now I think there's 94 players and that's like within a span of like uh, three or four years which is pretty cool uh, anyway up next we have a, a 1982-83 Grant Fuhrer rookie card I got a raw version and I got a PSA 8 version. Love this card. I love, I know, I just love like the older cards that I have that are slabbed. Um, it doesn't matter what grading company they're from. I, I, just, I love them. And I love having them in my collection. Uh, up next, uh, I've shown this before. This is from the 1980s as well. This is the 84, 85 um, Kelowna Wings. WHL grads cards and this is a Dan Hodgson card this is his earliest card this is not an NHL card but it's his earliest card he doesn't have any NHL cards but I I, I needed to have this card because it's like closest thing he has to his like rookie card up next got a few John Shabbat rookie cards to show off here uh, I don't know I just I really like John Shabbat I like what he does I like the message he gives kids um i like you know what he has to say in the community and i got three raw and then i got this ksa 8 john shabbat so i mean i i go to card shows and i ask for this i don't always 
come away with one, but when I do, I mean, most people charge like anywhere from 10 cents to a quarter for this card, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn one down if I find one. All right, and then lastly, last but not least, the couple Dan Frawley cards here. This is a 1986-87 Kodak Pittsburgh Penguins team cards. 1987-88 Panini sticker, Dan Frawley. No NHL cards, no rookie card. This is what I got though. This is his earliest NHL card right here. And he was actually the last captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins before Mario took the sea over, which is pretty cool. But anyway, 20 minutes in, sorry it was so long. Uh, I'm just really happy uh, you stuck around this long. You got to see my vin the vintage cards in my collection. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, drop a comment below. Uh, let me know which, which one you thought was coolest, if there's any cool facts in there, anything that was new to you. Um, please remember to like and subscribe if you can. If you're on Instagram, follow me at Indigenous Rookie Cards. I'm on Twitter at Cards Indigenous. And please check out my website if you can, www.indigenousrookiecard.com. That's all I got. Have a good night.